whom of you have lived or gone through some of the following circumstances? Losing a friendship you had for an entire lifetime. A teenager that leaves his house fighting between partners in a business where one has to leave. A couple who has had a relationship for many years breaks up. The first fight between newlyweds. Adult siblings who have stopped talking to each other for many years. After 15 or 20 years of marriage, it results in divorce. A teenager who commits suicide. To speak of interpersonal relationships is to speak of one of the most critical points in our lives. And I believe it is very important to speak about this topic. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional, Mana, a daily adventure with God. And during this week, we will be talking about relationships. I want to begin our devotional today telling you, asking you, and I want you to write to us through our YouTube channel, Devotional Mana. Here you will find the button that says, Thanks, where you can give thanks and also donate if you'd like to do so. And here, I'm going to ask you a question that I'd like for you to answer. How are our interpersonal relationships? Are we good at them? How do you see yourself in regards to your relationships? Having good relationships, being a good friend, being a good brother or sister, being a kind person, a friendly person, has much to do with our daily living. Allow me to give you some information the men and women who stand out the most today and who make up part of the 500 largest companies, the most powerful and richest companies in the world, when a magazine decided to write an article about these men and women, about who they are and why they were at the top of the biggest companies, why they were in such roles of influence and leadership, when they began to study their lives, they were greatly surprised. What did the experts find when they studied the men and women that earn the most money and have the greatest influence in the largest companies in the world? Number one, they found that the majority, the majority of them, when they graduated college, they did not have the best grades. Some did not even finish college and others did not even go to college. But when they began to ask why these men are in these positions of power and leadership, earning the millions they earn and having the power they had, what they did find out is that all these men and women were exceptional in their relationships. They were good friends. They made friends. They shared their lives, their time, their expectations. They had the ability to easily relate with others. I know that amongst Christians and those who listen to this devotional time, there are people who battle. I know that we live a personal battle in some cases and perhaps our fights based on the opportunity I've had to speak to many people during my life as a pastor. I've met many people who fight, who battle with their temperament, with their timidness, with their bad relationships with others. I know that this is sometimes a conflict that we cannot overcome. For some people, it is difficult to be friendly, to be kind, to find and use the right words at the right time. There are people who we easily reject even if we do not yet know them well and we say that we do not really care for them and would prefer not to visit certain places because they make us feel uncomfortable. For some people, it is difficult to speak with other people to be amongst other people. For some, it is very difficult to get up and speak in public. Many have lost jobs or good positions because they have not been successful in their interpersonal relationships. Or perhaps they do not know how to speak in public or give a small speech or present themselves. In fact, there are many brilliant professionals who cannot pass psychological tests with companies and not because they do not have the knowledge or the intelligence, but because when they are asked, they are asked to talk about themselves, about their expectations, about themselves, about what they want, who they are, then they trip up because it is difficult to define ourselves, to come out of that shell, of that fear, of so many things that we can feel towards others, towards those around us. To my dear family of Manao, welcome to a week where we, through the Bible, 
with God's word. And of course, understanding and referring to last week's topic when we spoke about how we were made in the image and likeness of God, that God loves us, that he has a plan for us. If we understand this truth, then we can take the next step. Because the first step is to learn to love ourselves in order to be able to love our neighbor. So this week, we will talk about relationships and how the Holy Spirit can help us with this task. But truly, I have a great expectation. And I do not know if you have the same expectation. But what I expect is that through the Holy Spirit, with this topic, we can help many of you take the step to advance, to move forward, to be who you are to demonstrate all the abilities, the talents, the gifts that each of you have. And so let's look at some of the important elements in regards to this topic. Throughout my life, I have not met a person who does not want to have any relationships with other people, who does not want to be loved and to love others, to share their dreams, their hopes, and be valued. We all long for emotional intimacy, physical and spiritual intimacy with others. And where does this desire come from? Well, let's begin with a story in the Bible. Adam was a human being created by God, the first human being. And he he felt in harmony with his environment, in intimacy with God. Eden was a true paradise, a safe place to live where there weren't any wars or conflicts or hunger or natural disasters war sin, Adam did not only feel secure and in peace with God, he was also at peace with himself. Adam was comfortable in his space in the universe. God had given him everything that he needed, work to do, an intimate relationship with his creator, and everything he needed to take care of himself. Look, if it is registered that Adam did not complain in regards to his situation, his position in the garden, What we do know is that he was missing something. And although God's relationship with Adam was pleasing to him, God wanted to give him more. What did God want for Adam? He wanted to give him a human companion, someone he can have ties with. God said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so think about this. This word is not only for those who are married or considering marrying. No, in general terms, we must say that God himself states that it is not good for man to be alone because God created mankind for relationships. God created mankind as a social being to share his life, his time, his expectations, his sadness, his joys with other people. Now imagine Adam's reaction when he saw Eve for the first time. I imagine he felt an irresistible attraction towards her emotional and physical attraction God had placed in the depths of his being the desire of an emotional and physical tie, a spiritual union, a great longing inside for what we call human relationship. This is what the Bible tells us. But when we talk about this, now look, God wants us to learn to have relationships. This is God's desire. You and I, in first place, were created to have ties. But when we talk about this, we can ask ourselves, why is this so difficult for us? How often do we hear the following phrase, I cannot stand that person, but I cannot live without him or her. You and I were created with the need to be in relationships, to have relationships, even though some people, there are people we may find difficult or sometimes frustrating. We need to have ties. And it is part of what God created in us. And why? Because you and I have the desire, the longing to be with others, to be wanted, valued for who we are. And so, according to the Bible, relationships are not optional. From the moment you and I were born in relationship with our parents, and as soon as we begin relationships with other children, and later on we build relationships where we work And then we develop ties with intimate friends. And at some point, the majority of people establish a tie with a person whom they love profoundly. All of this leads us to understand that God created us to have relationships. Now, when a relationship becomes difficult or painful, sometimes we try to leave it aside. And perhaps 
For some time, we do not want to have any types of relationships. However, in time, once again, we try to develop a relationship once again. If we have a choice to be in a relationship, we cannot elude, we are not able to elude being in relationships. And this is a decisive point because the only true choice that you and I have is to decide to make the effort or not to be healthier in our relationships to do things that either help or make our relationships more difficult. In the story of Adam and Eve, we find a truth, and this is that you and I were created to maintain three types of relationships. A relationship with God, a relationship with ourselves, and a relationship with others. Let's talk about this because this is very important. Let's begin with the last one, that you and I were created to have a relationship with other people. Now, apparently this sounds basic. We are all related with parents, with friends, with family, with colleagues, with neighbors, with team members, and other people. But I want to ask you a question, which is the same question I ask for you to respond in the chat through our YouTube channel. How are your relationships? Are they strong? Are they pleasing? Are they constructive? Are they respectful? Are they interesting? Or perhaps is it that your relationships are less than pleasing, tense, cold, painful, and frustrating? Or perhaps you have both types of relationships Truly, it requires a lifelong effort to have good relationships, but it is worthwhile. When we think about all these things, we can say, well, the problem in relationships always relates to others, and we are always seeking to find guilty parties. Well, I do not like this person because of this. I did not like that person because they're very intense and this and that. And it is as if we're always saying that the other person is the problem. But what is sad is that when we live in this function, we do not learn because when we know someone else, when we meet someone else, we will begin the same circle. You, We will begin to blame the other person for everything that is happening around you. Do you not find it familiar that things often do not change because we constantly play the game of blaming others? The same thing happened with Adam and Eve. They sinned. No, well, it was the woman you gave me. No, it was the serpent. But it so happens that this is when problems begin in our relationships. In psychology, there is a very popular phrase, and it is that it is never one person's fault. And this is true because there is all, always a level of responsibility for all parties. And we must learn this in our lives. Often we react to what others say to us based on our fears. And this constantly limits us in our relationships. The Bible is very clear about this. It is unhealthy to consistently think that others are at fault and that nothing is my own fault or I have nothing to do with it. We must live each day knowing that God wants to take us to a new level in our lives. When I hear about a person battling alcoholism, this is a true war. In addition to this person's problem of dependence to alcohol, what else does this addiction cause? Well, it affects all their ties, all their relationships. A woman who has alcoholism problems pushes away her husband, cannot focus on her children. Perhaps she has good days where she can communicate, but there are also other days that are terrible where she doesn't speak much to her husband, forgets to pick up her children at school, and often this person is, a, is not conscious of how he or she is affecting other people, people who make a part of her life. Perhaps this person is not conscious of the way their behavior is affecting their relationships. And when they are asked, why do you do the things you do? Their response is, well, I don't know. Almost absent of expression, powerless in regards to themselves, as if unable to acknowledge to understand their own behavior, unable to understand the way that they affect others, unable to discover their place in the world. There is no doubt that it is very difficult to overcome addictions. And I know the troubles and difficulties that people with addictions face. But if a person who is going th to, through this is not able to sincerely acknowledge their problem objectively, 
realizing that God is the only one that can change your heart. He is the only one that can transform me and allow me to see life in a different way. This is extremely important. We are talking about interpersonal relationships. And so think about this last example I gave you. Why are we the way we are? Why can we often not be forward? Why do we become bottled up? Or why do we live with a temperament or a lifestyle where we do not realize that we often hurt many people, that we hurt others and isolate ourselves? Allow God to treat your heart and truly allowing God to heal your heart, allowing God to take control inside of you is what will help you in your own perspective and in the relationships you have with others. I know that many of you are suffering because you acknowledge this need inside of your hearts. Not psychology, not philosophy, nor material things, and much less those things that we look to lean on that make us addicts, addicted. None of these things will change our lives. God comes to heal this critical area in your heart so that you are no longer fearful of being yourself so you are not fearful of having relationships with others so that you are no longer fearful of doing what you need to do and assuming risks perhaps you are a very timid person who has difficulty expressing themselves or it is difficult for you to manifest what you feel and what you are going through but God can do something inside your heart pray with me father thank you for making me for forming me for creating me but thank you for allowing me to understand the need i have inside of me today to relate with other people acknowledging the importance of the human beings next to me the relationships i form around me thank you for allowing me to each day better understand life and all that it entails i give myself to you I ask for your blessing and your presence in our lives. I give you thanks and I bless you in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. And I await for you tomorrow. Blessings to all.